Okay, it comes down in the middle of your mat. Feet hip width apart. Perhaps a little wiggle on the toes. A couple of little shoulder circles. Take the shoulders down and back. Okay, let's put one hand on the tummy, one hand on the chest. We'll go pelvic floor and TVA. Pulling in 100%, tuck the pelvis under. Grow nice and tall in the spine, length at the back of the neck. We'll hold just for five seconds, but this hand here, you can feel TVA kind of doing a little bit of a job with this, the lower hand, but the top hand, maybe just notice if you're holding your breath. So pulling in, five, four, three, two, and one, and slow release. And again, I actually haven't pulled these muscles in, but it feels like about two weeks. Five, four, three, two, one, and a slow release. One more. Pulling in, pelvic floor, TVA. Try and relax the feet a little bit, kind of go heavy, feet down into mat. Five, four, three, two, one, and a slow release. Take it to 50%, so the engagement's there, but not so much, you're holding your breath. Now, you're gonna know this one, it's a breathing exercise with a shoulder exercise. So, in, you're gonna interlink the hands, push the palms away, lift that all the way up, arms going up around the ears if you can, breathing out, palms facing you, around the shoulders, almost like you're doing like a cat stretch, bring it down, then interlink the fingers behind, breathing in, squeeze the shoulder blades together, breathing out, palms together. And just go with your version, your breath, breathing in, lift, and then breathing out, bring it down, try to get the space between the shoulder blades, breathing in, shoulder squeeze. If you can, get your wrists to touch. Breathing out, hands at heart centre prayer. Two more. This time though, on these next two, think about what happens with the pelvis, try and keep the pelvis tucked under. <clears throat> try not to let the chest flare or the rib cage lift. So, so if you can think about <clears throat> what we're doing with the shoulders and the shoulders move, this, this point's not kind of flaring. So you're gonna keep that tucked under as much as you can. <laughs> and that's actually quite tricky. Okay, coming to center them. Neck, shoulder glide, and side bend. So ear down into shoulder for your neck release. Reach this other hand down towards the floor. Then shoulder glide out. Then center, lift, side bends. I always want to make creaky, not creaky noises because that's how my body feels. <laughs> Reach this hand down, ear down. Shoulder glide, center, lift, side bends. Two more on each side. Still thinking about your 50% um, pull, pelvic floor. A little bit of pull in the TVA. Maybe you can think about spiraling, chest to ceiling, if you feel like you can do a little bit more on the side bends. Again, reaching down with the other hand. <laughs> Shoulder glide. I just thought it'd be really good to like have a complete break and not do any exercises like this for like the whole time I was off. But it doesn't really work like that. <laughs> I wish I'd just done a few. <laughs> but anyway, it makes you really appreciate it when you do do it. <laughs> Last time, shoulder glide, centering, lift, side bends. And release, so a slow roll down, so chin to chest, slide hands down the legs. You can soften the knees or deeply bend in the knees. Come down, so if you can brush the fingertips on the floor, slowly uncurl, circle the arms around. If you choose, you could put in a baby back bend here, so slightly take the arms like over the head. And then again, chin to chest. Bending knees, don't think about hamstring stretches, thinking about releasing the lower back. 
pulling in the core of your baby butt, bending, press down with the feet. Last time, nice slow roll down into that release. Come up to centre, we're going to go sundial, so holding on to opposite elbows. Into that side bend, obviously it's more intense because you've got your arms interlinked. Soften the knees, bring it forwards to your forward fold. And then just unpeeling to the other side, pulling in the core, press down with the feet. Back around, really bending the knees here. We're not thinking about hamstring stretching, we're thinking about getting some length down the lower back. Working again into the side bends. Try not to hold the breath. Back around. Can you see if you can get your forehead to even just brush your, across your knees last time as you come forwards? Your nose or your forehead brushing your knees. Don't know who that was, just popped in. <laughs> Take it back. Uh, center and um, release. So arms around, lift them up towards the ceiling, then see if you can go up onto your toes, just a moment to balance, full body stretch, wake up the calf muscles, and then lower that down. And again, lift, and it's breathing in, lift, it's breathing out, lower. So it's hard because you might be looking down at the, the screen, but see if you can look forwards and get some length here at the back of the neck. If you want to make it harder, just bring the feet completely together. So you're on, on that midline, you're working a little bit harder on balance. Two more. Into the left, find the pelvic floor, pull it on TVA, keep the pelvis tucked under. Last time, breathing in left. Breathing out lower. Gonna go to our squats if you want, you could grab your weights. Up to you. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with my weights. I, my spine feels a lot better when I put a tiny bit of weight through it. As to when I don't put weight through it. So uh, with, with the weights, just think about perhaps um, with the arms, we'll go around, same, same position we were just doing, and then into your squat, you've got your front raise. I'm just adding so you can see me in the screens, because but you can see what I was doing anyway now. Breathing out as you come down into your squat, breathing in as you lift. Try as much as you can, keep the shoulders down away from the ears. If your weights are super heavy, that is quite tricky. <laughs> Finding the core. Pull in that pelvic floor, pull in on TPA, pelvis thing tucked under. My arms feel so weak. <laughs> Does anyone else feel like that? <laughs> Three more. Try not to let the knees pronate in. Think about that alignment. Oh. Okay, let's just put the weights down, have a little rest from them a sec. A little bit of a shake out on the arms. Goal posts. Breathing in, we're gonna go to the left, breathing out to the right. Soften the knees. Just kind of relax the legs here a little bit so we're not gripping the floor too much with the feet. Now you can see my elbows dropping down so see if you can keep them up level with the shoulders and this is your pace so breathing in if you can through the nose out through the mouth and if you feel like you need to get that energy and you kind of you feel a bit kind of slow or tired, sluggish, then you're going to work a little bit faster, like kind of quick inhales. 
if you're feeling like you're chilled and you don't want to be putting loads of energy into your body, then just slow it down. Just go with what your body needs. And if you are on the slow down one, you could even take your arms to the sides and kind of work a little bit more into a stretch. So this is your choice. Again, try and keep the elbows up level with the shoulders. If you're working fast, you should get some heat in the body here. Three more breaths. Nice, a little bit of a shake or a shoulder roll. Back to weights if you had weights. Shoulders down and back, scapula set. Depending on what you've been doing work-wise or in the day, I don't know how this feels. This feels really um, nice to me. I had a sports massage yesterday and, he, and he's brilliant actually, because one, he saw me on a Sunday, <laughs> which I always think is great, but, um, he just does my legs, which is totally great, uh, but I grip onto the massage bed. <laughs> so I walk away with my legs really released, but my shoulders really tight. <laughs> so for me today, uh, this is great for my shoulders. <laughs> Try not to dip the head forward, so we don't want to be in this position. So think about tucking the pelvis under, getting the length at the back of the neck, if anything. You're kind of thinking about your sh your the tips of your ears directly over your shoulders. If that helps, kind of the picture of that. Two more. Keeping strong in the wrists. So this one lateral raise, and then opposite um it's like a pendulum opposite leg lift, and then the other side. And you can keep switching that area. It's just a little bit of a challenge on the balance. Think again about the pelvis here. So try not to be arching in the lower back or sending kind of the, you know, the hips too far forward. So stay in neutral. Think about the shoulders. Try not to let the shoulders lift up to the ears. We used to do this in Aquafit, this one. But obviously without the weights. I used to like that. <laughs> Three more. Keep coming back to that centre point. Okay, the sumo squat then. So go as wide as you can. You can allow the toes to point out slightly. As low as you can, that's comfortable. One or two weights, whichever you prefer. Drawing a really big circle all the way in front. Breathing in, lift. Breathing out, lower. Still my favourite move, my number one. <laughs> Try and keep the eye gaze forwards if you can, and the head kind of dead central. It's quite tricky, the head often wants to shift as you circle. So I've gone four one way and I'm going four the other, but you can alternate obviously each way if you wanted, if you wanted to. Engage the core. <laughs> Two more. Last one. Okay then, put weights down. Let's go to our single leg exercise. So this is your choice. You've got your chair squats, your steps, over a step. You could go on a compass and round. You've got your lunge or your deadlift. I'm gonna do the chairs today with, looks like Dave. <laughs> Got my chair set up. Two, uh, 10 on each leg. Um, two, uh, let's go, uh, on the chair would be one set. I think on the stairs you could probably do two sets and the same with the lunges, you might get two sets in that time. But the chairs takes a bit longer so you might be doing just one set of 10 on each side. 
Perhaps just say uh, 10, on each, 10 on the left and then 10 on the right, 10 on the left and the right. Try not to alternate today. So just focus on working the strength on one side continuously and then switch it. In all those exercises, whichever one you've chosen, you're thinking about pressing the foot down, the ball of the foot, working through, particularly towards the big toe, the knee, try not to let the knee pronate in across the midline, the hips as well, we're not letting those hips sink, they're lifting up and forwards, there's that engagement with the core. Oh, I've lost count. Day counting. <laughs> and in all of them, you're kind of thinking about the, the quickest route. I mean, we did this when we did the quick feet stuff. The quickest and the strongest route to get into what you're doing. <laughs> Obviously without wobbling. And it's only human to have one side different to the other. <laughs> I'm noticing what I'm doing. I'm literally plonking myself back down on that chair. I know I look who I am. Oh, you're gonna try and do it, see you like a feather. <laughs> I'm not doing that at all. Not today. Ugh. So waiting for, I think I'm nearly done. I'm just seeing who's coming back in. Yep. Yeah. Okay, bit of balance before we go down the mat. So just transfer the weight into one foot. I can't see my head. <laughs> Transfer the weight onto one foot. Now, I mean, I, I know it's funny because some people go like that when they go on a balance. Some people go like that. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but it's just out of interest what people do. Some people might go like that. But um, I tend to just bend my knee and do that. But everyone's different. I don't think it really matters. So if you can close your eyes, count to five. Drawing the core. Squeeze the glutes. Don't hold the breath. <laughs> That's pretty good today, actually. Then opening your eyes, go for 10 heel lifts. And on this one, you're thinking about pressing that foot into the mat, squeezing the glute, firing the glute, engaging with the core. This one is one of those reaction things from foot going up the body. Try and keep the shoulders relaxed, those tips, those little earlobe tips over the top of the shoulders. And if you want to think about speed, it's the quickest way up and the quickest way down. So just a couple more, I've lost count again. I can't, I can't talk and count today, I can't do two things at once. Other side. Close your eyes, count to five. Think about your head. So if your head's drifting forward, you're looking down, just try and bring it all, kind of center it all and bring it back. Use your big toe as a bit of an anchor, use your pelvic floor, squeeze the glutes. Relax your shoulders. So if you can close your eyes, count to five. <laughs> This side's a bit wobbly. <laughs> then your 10 heel lifts, engage the core, get that glute squeezing. Maybe you can feel this in the calf muscle a little bit or around the ankle. Woo. Again, quick up and quick down if you're thinking about the pace and the speed on that one.
Okay, take a little bit of a stretch with the legs. So you're literally gonna go one foot. So I'm gonna always use the width of the mat's quite nice. Put one foot over that side and then the other foot at the back. We're just just like a, it's like a warrior one if you're into your warriors or a calf stretch. So you can actually bend that front knee. Just a really simple calf stretch really, but if you prefer, you could straighten that leg. It's, it's no worries, but the main thing is engaging that back heel down into the mat. So it's your choice whether you want to bend that leg there or not. Then with the arms, just take a um, warrior. We haven't done this, not warrior, eagle. We haven't done that eagle for a while. Cross the elbows. Then lift up the elbows. And you can interlink the fingers here as well. And then just explore the space either side of each shoulder. So it's a gentle little shoulder dip. It could be a figure of eight. All just whilst we're doing that calf stretch. So keep the focus going down into that back heel. Think about getting some length there from the heel up towards the back of the knee. You have to engage the core just to work with the balance here. Obviously the further side to side you go with your shoulders, the more it tests your balance. <laughs> but it does give you that really nice stretch on the backs of the shoulders. So then come out and swap legs. Exactly the same, if you bent that knee on the last one, maybe bend it on this one, or if you prefer it straight, no worries. Think about the hips though, if you are on straight as well, don't let the hips wiggle. So try and keep your hips nice and square to the way you're facing. Then other arm, other way around with your eagle arms. And then interlink your fingers. Then you can just start exploring that kind of little shoulder dip in there. I mean, if it helps, <laughs> I'm watching people do that, then it might be a bit confusing, but you could, you could kind of think about the elbows dipping as well, if that helps you to get that kind of motion, more so than doing shoulders. <laughs> but you'll get more of a shoulder stretch if you do do shoulders, if that makes sense. Keep pushing down that back heel. Nice one. Okay.